All right, we are picking up with chapter 16 and 17. So chapter 16 is certain conditions originating in the perinatal period. So remember, natal is birth, peri is surrounding birth. So these are going to be codes for our newborn. So for coding and reporting, the purposes of the perinatal period is defined as birth through the 28th day following birth. The following guidelines are provided for reporting purposes. So these are used for our neonates, birth to 28 days. So codes from this chapter are never for use on the maternal record. Codes from chapter 15, the obstetrics chapter, are never permitted on the newborn record. Chapter 16 codes may be used throughout the life of the patient if the condition is still present. So anything that says the word neonatal or perinatal is going to be a zero to 28 days. But there are other codes in this section, such as fetal alcohol syndrome, that affect somebody for a lifetime. And so because of that, we can still use those codes because it is still present. Now, when coding the birth episode in a newborn record, assign a code for category Z38, live-born infants according to place of birth and type of delivery as the principal diagnosis. A code from category Z38 is signed only once to a newborn at the time of birth. If a newborn is transferred to another institution, a code from category Z38 should not be used at the receiving hospital. A code from category Z38 is used only on the newborn record, not on the mother's record. So we're gonna go back to ICD-10 data and we're going to look at the Z38. So Z37 are our mom codes, Z38 are our baby codes, and the notation reminds us of that. So again, for babies, we need to know where and how they were born, as well as whether or not they were a multiple. On mom's side, we just need to know how they were born and then the outcome of that delivery. So on the baby side, the most common one we're going to see is Z38.00, single live-born infant delivered vaginally. But again, if they were born cesarean, Z3801. We also have single live-born infant born outside of hospital, again, like in an ambulance or at home. And then again, we start seeing all of the other, the twins, other, you know, triplets, quadruplets, quintuplets, other multiples. This is the first code that goes on a baby's chart. The first thing is that you are born, then you can have complications. That's how the code book wants us to look at it. Now, it goes on to remind us, codes from other chapters may be used from codes from chapter 16 if the codes from the other chapters provide more specific detail. Codes for signs and symptoms may be assigned when a definitive diagnosis has not been established. If the reason for the encounter is a perinatal condition, the code from chapter 16 should be sequenced first. So again, we want to keep these things in mind. What do we know from the record? What information should we be pulling out of the record? And again, sometimes there's going to be unknowns where we don't know enough about a condition, and that's where signs and symptoms are acceptable. Now, should a condition originate in the perinatal period and continue throughout the life of the patient, the perinatal code should be continued to be used regardless of the patient's age. Again, like fetal alcohol syndrome, all right? It's something that's going to stay the lifetime with that patient. Now, if a newborn has a condition that may be either due to the birth process or community acquired, and the documentation does not indicate which it is, the default is due to the birth process and a code from chapter 16 should be used. So if the baby is born and shortly afterwards, they find out they have a strep infection in their throat, they are going to assume due to birth process. Community acquired means that it was picked up from the facility itself. Now, if let's say the baby was born and the next day they find an outbreak of strep in the newborn unit, 
then that will be community acquired. But the default is always going to be uh, due to the birth process. Now, for children, we're gonna code all clinically significant conditions that are notated on the routine newborn examination. Now, what do we mean by that? A condition is clinically, clinically significant if it requires any one of these. Clinical evaluation or therapeutic treatment or diagnostic procedures or extended length of hospital stay or increased nursing care and or monitoring or has implications for future health care needs. It says no. The perinatal guideline listed above uh, the same general coding guidelines for additional diagnoses except for the final point regarding implications for future health care needs. Code should be assigned for conditions that have been specified by the provider as having implications for future health care needs. And that's because the nature of a lot of unknowns with babies, especially congenital anomalies, which we're going to talk about next. Now, we're going to assign a code from category Z05, observation and evaluation of newborns and infants for suspected conditions ruled out to identify those instances when a healthy newborn is evaluated uh, for a suspected condition that is determined after study not to be present. Do not use a code from category Z05 when the patient has identified signs and symptoms of a suspected problem. In such cases, code the sign and symptom. Now, a code from category Z05 may also be assigned as a principal or first listed code for readmissions or encounters when a code from category Z38 no longer applies. Codes from category Z05 are for use only for healthy newborns and infants for which no condition after study is found to be present. A code from category Z05 is to be used as a secondary code after the code from category Z38, live-born infants according to place of birth and type of delivery. So let's look at these. So again, as it tells us, this category is used for newborns within the neonatal period who are suspected of having an abnormal condition unrelated to exposure from the mother or the birth process, but without signs or symptoms in which after examination is ruled out, meaning they do not have it. Now, if it is for a suspected condition, that's going to be from the, the P codes again. So what do we have? We have cardiac, infection, neurologic, respiratory, genetic, metabolic, and immunologic. We also have, um, again, genetic, uh, sorry, do, 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 sorry, go on, uh, gastrointestinal, genitourinary, skin, um, musculoskeletal, connective tissue, other specified and unspecified. And so again, this is when we think there's something wrong with the baby, but after study, it turns out not to be the case. Now, we assign codes for conditions that require treatment or further investigation, that prolong the length of stay or require resource utilization. Okay, so again, we wanna keep that in mind. You cause and effect what's going on with the baby. We assign codes for conditions that have specified by the provider as having implications for future health care needs. Note this guideline should not be used for adult patients. Again, this is only for babies. Now, we also have codes here to describe other issues such as prematurity and low birth weight. So, providers use different criteria in determining prematurity. A code for prematurity should not be used unless it is documented. And again, prematurity is usually before 37 weeks. Assignment of codes and categories P05, disorders of newborn related to slow fetal growth and fetal malnutrition, and P07, disorders of newborn related to short gestation and low birth weight not elsewhere classified, should be based on the recorded birth weight and estimated gestational age. Codes from category P05 should not 
be assigned with codes from category P07. Again, it's one or the other. When both birth weight and gestational age are available, two codes from category P07 should be assigned with the code for birth weight sequence before the code for gestational age. Again, these are gonna be for our small babies and our early babies. Then we have codes from category P07, disorders of the newborn related to short gestation and low birth weight not elsewhere classified, are for use for a child or adult who is premature or had a low birth weight as a newborn, and this is affecting the patient's current health status. Again, going back to cause and effect. Now, category P36, bacterial sepsis of newborn, includes congenital sepsis, meaning they were born with it. So, if a perinate is documented as having sepsis, without documentation of congenital or community acquired, the default is congenital and a code from category P36 should be assigned. If the P36 code includes the causal organism, so again, the microbe, an additional code from category B95, Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, and Enterococcus as the cause of disease classifiable elsewhere, or B96, other bacterial agents as the cause of disease classifiable elsewhere, should not be assigned. If a P36 code does not include the causal organism, assign an additional code from category B96. If applicable, use additional codes to identify severe sepsis and any associated acute organ dysfunction. So just like mom, we have a separate code for perinatal sepsis and neonatal sepsis. But if it's severe sepsis, we will also use an R65.2 code. Now, we also have code P95, stillbirth, and this is only for use in institutions that maintain separate records for stillbirths. No other code should be used with P95, and P95 should never be used on the mother's record. Again, this is for cataloging purposes only. All right, let's talk about chapter 17. So again, congenital malformations, deformations, and chromosomal abnormalities. So again, these are um, basically misfires of the body, having not enough or too much of something. So for instance, um, having four fingers on one hand or having six fingers on one hand. We have codes for those. We have codes for so many different conditions. Again, these congenital conditions, something that you were born with. Now, some of these can be seen on the outside, like a cleft lip or cleft palate, and some of them can only be seen on the inside, like chromosomal abnormalities. So again, this is one of those sections where we wanna know as much as possible to assign the appropriate codes. So assign the appropriate codes from category Q00 to Q99, congenital malformations, deformations, and chromosomal abnormalities when a malformation is documented, okay, documented. A malformation may be the principal or first listed diagnosis on a record or a secondary diagnosis, again, depending on what's going on with that specific child. When a malformation uh, or abnormality does not have a unique code assignment, assign additional codes for any manifestations that may be present. Again, for instance, there are certain syndromes that we have names for, we have definitions for, but there's no exact diagnosis code. So in that case, we have to code for the manifestations. What do we know about the condition so far? When the code assignment specifies identify, oh sorry, when the code assignment specifically identifies the malformation that are inherent components of the anomaly should not be coded separately. So again, Down syndrome comes with certain specific features. We do not code those features, but we do code any other complications. So Codes from chapter 17 may be used throughout the life of the patient if a congenital malformation or deformity has been corrected. A personal history code should be used to identify the history of the malformation or deformity. Although present at birth, malformations, deformations, or chromosomal abnormalities may not be identified until later in life. 
one of the biggest things that we need to remember is that, again, a lot of the chromosomal abnormalities are not found out until there's a problem later in life. For instance, a lot of women don't realize that they have an XXY chromosome. They have an extra chromosome, and that can make them infertile. And so if you don't know about that until you've already tried getting pregnant and they started doing testing on you, you might not find that out until you're in your 20s or 30s. So again, keep in mind that some of these things are going to be found at the day the baby's born and other ones are going to come with time. However, whenever the condition is diagnosed by the physician, it is appropriate to assign a code from uh, codes Q00 to Q99. For birth admission, the appropriate code from category Z38 Live-born infants, according to place of birth and type of delivery, should be sequenced as the principal diagnosis, followed by any congenital anomaly code Q00 to Q99. So let's just quickly look at the breakdown of this section. So again, it's going to go through uh, organ systems as well as body areas. So we have organ systems, so we have nervous, uh, circulatory, respiratory, digestive, urinary, musculoskeletal, but then they separate it out. Eye, ear, face, and neck, cleft lip, cleft palate, genital organs, and then other congenital malformations. So again, keep in mind we want to be as specific as possible, and it might require doing a little bit of research to make sure that we have the correct information. Remember, never be afraid to ask questions. Never be afraid to do a little bit of research. All right, we will be coding this in class. Have a great day.